So inside of Brawl Stars at the moment, there are currently 11 tank brawlers. Each has its strengths, but they also come with weaknesses. So inside of this video, I've ranked each tank from the worst to the best. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's begin this video off with the worst tank and that is Hank. Quite literally, this brawler isn't good whatsoever. When he first came out, he was extremely broken, but now has significantly fallen off. First of all, Hank is a very vulnerable brawler and pretty much just loses to everyone. With Hank, it can take a long time to recover from sticky situations and it's very difficult for him to push up and take control of the map. Given that he has to charge his balloon in order to deal damage and plus, he can't even heal while doing so. Especially if you are also in close combat with brawlers, his burst damage isn't fast enough to even kill enemy brawlers because you only deal around 500 damage at a time and you'd have to try not to consume time and charge up your balloon. Hence, this is why Hank is the worst tank. So, moving on to the next tank and that is Frank. Frank undoubtedly has zero mobility and struggles to even get close to brawlers to deal damage mainly because of his main attack as every time you attack you stop in one position and then the attack registers so as a result this also makes it harder for him to charge up his super and his super can even potentially go to waste as well because like his main attack he stops even though the range is slightly longer with his super if you end up stunning a brawler from like the edge of your pre-aim radius you'd still have to take like a step or two in order to be ranged to be able to attack. Also, his super is very easily avoidable. Like Hank, Frank is probably one of the worst brawlers in general with how weak he is. Anyways, this is why Frank is poor as a brawler. All right, so next tank is going to be Daryl. Daryl is a moderate brawler, but the thing is, the thing that really helps him is his super. His super can be utilized for a lot of things like escaping tough situations, setting himself on enemies, or even cancelling supers. His gadget tar barrel really helps him out a lot because he creates a slowing area around himself for 5 seconds. This helps him a lot, especially when he uses his super as then enemies would have trouble escaping Daryl and can really settle himself and get close to enemies dealing an insane amount of damage because the maximum damage that he can deal in a single attack is 4560 damage at power 11 that is also one thing is that daryl has a trait and that trait is that he charges his super over time so every second a small tick of daryl's super charges up allowing him to gain his super faster as well all right so moving on to the next tank on the list and that is ash so Ash is a decent brawler as well, but keep in mind that you should prioritize charging up his rage bar in order to deal a massive amount of damage. At zero rage, he deals moderate damage, but the more you fill the rage bar up, the more damage he can deal. And he has a lot of potential once you fill up the rage bar. To charge up his rage faster, you can use his first bash star power. When Ash has all his ammo, the first enemy he hits charges his rage bar by 37.5% instead of 12.5%. I recommend going to choke points because that's where a lot of enemies can bunch up. If you end up even hitting more than one brawler with your first attack with his first bash star power, you can charge up the rage significantly as well. His chill pill gadget is pretty effective as well because upon activation, Ash will heal for up to 3240 health if his rage bar is fully filled. However, this resets all of Ash's rage and this gadget can't be used if Ash has no rage. It is still good because Ash can at least heal himself by the click of a button and it also allows him to stay alive longer. Okay, so the next tank that I will talk about is Rosa. So, we all know Rosa has been getting a ton of nerfs but she is still a good brawler and she is maintaining her spot in the middle of the meta because of her hypercharge. When activated, Rosa Super slows enemies down in a 3.33 tile radius around herself that also moves with her. The area of effect disappears when her super is inactive. 
She also gains a 25% speed and shield boost, as well as a 5% damage boost. This helps Rosa a lot because it leaves enemies with a lack of ability to escape her super and she can really chip in a lot of damage. It will also take enemies a while to kill her because she also has the shield buff on top of it. Her tank trait is also helpful because whenever she takes damage, her super gradually charges up as well. So that means she can gain her super much quicker. With her thorny gloves star power as well, while Rosa's super is active, Rosa gains 276 damage per attack, which also gives a total of 828 more damage per attack. This can really help Rosa to take down enemies much easily and really help her overall build. This is why Rosa is a decent tank. Okay, so next up I will be talking about Jackie. So, Jackie is a pretty good tank in the meta, but she heavily relies on her pneumatic booster gadget. This gadget, however, can really assist her in getting close to enemies and being able to chip in a lot of damage. Keep in mind that Jackie will kind of be in a disaster once all her gadgets have expired. Anyways, a little addition to her kit that makes her reasonably viable is her hypercharge, as when she activates it and uses her super, enemies will also be slowed down for 5 seconds, which really gives them a lack of escape and can't really move around as much. She has the ability to deal a lot of damage to them in that way, but it can be quite hard to charge up her hypercharge, mainly due to the range of her main attack. Playing her on maps with lots of walls is recommended, as she can hit through the walls as well as have that range to be able to deal a good amount of damage to enemies. Her counter crush star power also makes her good. She also returns damage back to the enemy if she ends up taking damage, significantly lowering their health as well. Okay, so the next tank on the list is in fact Bull. Bull's hypercharge has definitely increased his placement in the meta because his hypercharge allows Bull to use his super and rush into enemies, taking 80% less damage at the same time. Bull really needs this because normally if you charge up without a hypercharge, you have the potential of being killed or significantly lowered during your super. If you combine his hypercharge with his stomper gadget and tough guy star power, he is basically much harder to kill due to the fact that with his gadget, he can stop anywhere within a super and slow enemies down, enabling to maintain his range when bursting a lot of damage onto his enemies. And his tough guy star power gives him a shield that reduces his damage intake by 30% when he is below 40% health, which can also assist him into staying alive longer in battle. Alright, next up I will be speaking about BB. So, like Bull, the reason why she is mainly good is because of her hypercharge. Her super can bounce and pierce through enemies, making it great for hitting multiple targets and disrupting their formations, right? Well, her hypercharge takes this a step further by splitting the super on enemy contact effectively, doubling the area of denial and potentially catching more brawlers off guard. The additional movement speed, damage and shield boost can make BB a hyper aggressive threat. The speed helps her to close the gap on enemies and potentially chain her super for even more control. The shield provides extra survivability while she's in the thick of battle. Her vitamin booster gadget is also good as well because this gadget offers a burst of healing allowing BB to sustain herself in fights, especially after unleashing her hypercharge and potentially taking some damage. This self preservation helps her stay in the fight longer and potentially secure kills. With her star powers however, either one is completely fine, it just depends on your playing style. Alright, so let's move on to the third best tank and that is Buster. So, a reason why Buster is good is because of his trait. Buster's unique trait revolves around having his allies nearby. He can charge his super if he is within 3 tiles of his allies, allowing him to charge up his super slightly faster. Buster deals more damage the closer the enemies are. 
His super can be effective in circumstances as it creates a shield that absorbs enemy fire and reflects it back as counterattacks. It essentially turns Buster into a walking fortress protecting himself and nearby teammates. His Kevlar vest star power further enhances this kit as he takes less damage and becomes immune to crowd control effects, allowing him to stand his ground even against heavy attacks. His slow-mo replay gadget adds a control element to Buster's attack. By pulling enemies closer, he sets them up for himself or his teammates to take down. This can be particularly useful for interrupting enemy escapes or creating opportunities for follow-up attacks. Hence, this is why he is a good brawler. Alright, so the second best tank right now is in fact El Primo. He is a formidable tank mainly because of his hypercharge. His hypercharge adds an enemy pulling effect to El Primo Super, making it a powerful tool for controlling the battlefield. By yanking enemies in with the hypercharge, he can group them up for himself or his teammates to unleash devastating attacks. On top of the shield and crowd control, the hypercharge grants El Primo a 25% speed boost and a 5% in damage increase. This makes him a hyper aggressive threat after unleashing his super, allowing him to chase down enemies or deal even more damage in a fight. His suplex supplement gadget is really good too, as this gadget lets El Primo grab and throw an enemy over obstacles. This can be a great way to reposition enemies into unfavorable situations or interrupt their attacks. When used strategically with the hypercharger's pull, El Primo can potentially grab an enemy pulled in by his super and toss them even further away, creating a strong combo. Like BB, Primo star power choices also depend on your playing style. Anyways, let's move on to the best tank. Alrighty, so the best tank inside of the game right now is in fact Meg. Meg is insane because of how versatile she can be. When she was initially released, she would start in her normal form and then have to farm up a super to be in her mech form. But now, she starts in her mech form. She is viable in modes such as knockout because with the sharpshooters, she is able to counter them so easily. You can even utilize her to counter tanks as well. Initially because of the insane burst damage that she provides as well as using the swipe super to deal further damage as well. Her jolting vaults gadget is very effective as well because this gadget heals the mecha by 518 health per second for 5 seconds which totals up to 2590 health and this can only be activated in her mech form. On top of also having a good amount of health on the mecha, she can also heal a third of it back, allowing her to stay alive longer. And she wouldn't even die too because her enemies would still have to face her in normal form. Both her star powers are also useful, but it depends on which one you prefer. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please be sure to let me know if you agree with this tier list or not. Consider dropping a sub and like and share my videos if you want to as well. My Discord server link will also be in the description, so join that. And uh, see you guys later. Peace. I